It's Tuesday, May 21st, 2024. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. An absolutely stunning day today here in Palm Desert, California, probably mid 90s right now as I make this video. Uh, I want to take a few minutes today uh, to share uh, some articles with you. Love to get your input. Please comment down below. And of course, please like, share, and subscribe continue blasting uh, these videos all over your social media. Really appreciate that. And I think that uh, we should keep waking people up. There's a lot of people waking up right now. And we got to continue to wake up as many people as possible. Most people are not going to wake up. I, I, I understand that. But if we can wake up uh, a few more people, uh, I, I think that's uh, one of the best things we could do right now. Now, uh, first article I want to share with you is from the economiccollapse.com. The gap between the rich and the poor is larger than ever, and frustration is growing to very dangerous levels. Uh, just um, some highlights of this article that I want to share with you. And, uh, be, and Before I even share these highlights, a few things I want to say. You know, on a daily basis, uh, I reiterate and reinforce uh, what I'm doing, uh, what people I know are doing, Buying tangible hard assets, food, water, uh, security, uh, adding skills, learning how to do things, learning how to protect yourself, etc. And I've noticed that uh, two things that really stand out when I mention this is gold and silver. Pe there's the, the, the trolls really get activated when I mention gold and silver, and I'm not really sure why that is. They have uh, they don't seem to be as offended or triggered when I mention adding skills training, security, food, water. Uh, but as soon as I mention, mention gold and silver, uh, these people are extremely triggered. Do you know why? Please comment down below. I'd love to know why these people are so triggered. Uh, I believe in being as diversified as possible, investing in yourself, knowing how to do things. Um, you, you are an asset. And the more you know how to do, the more of an asset you are invest in yourself. Have food. Have water in case of uh, in case of natural or man-made disasters. Uh, get out of the system the best that you can because when the system gets shut off, you'll be able to survive. And of course, you need tangible hard assets because the dollar is on borrowed time, ladies and gentlemen. So again, gold and silver will trigger people. I'm not sure exactly why that is. Maybe it's because these people are the same people that that kept telling you and I that gold was going to go to $800 an ounce and silver was going to go to $8 an ounce and it's a barbarous relic, you shouldn't buy it. And these people have absolutely none. They have absolutely no preparations whatsoever. And I guess now all they can do is attack these two assets for whatever reason, maybe because they can't afford them now. They don't have any. They have no way of acquiring them now. They didn't make the sacrifices. Maybe they didn't work the extra side hustle. Uh, they just didn't buy when they should have been buying. And look, uh, you could buy today. I, I, I think these are things we have to keep adding uh, to the portfolio. But why is it that these people have such an issue with gold and silver? It's absolutely uh, amazing. I, I think it's almost a little bit funny uh, that, that you know, they, they called it a barbarous relic and they keep attacking it. For some reason, they don't want you buying gold and silver. They despise gold and silver. You can do everything else, but don't buy gold and silver. I don't get it. If you do, comment down below. Now, getting into this article, the Fed pumped trillions of dollars into the system in recent years to pump up the value of financial assets, and it worked. And this is another reminder of why I buy gold, why I buy silver, and why people in my circle do the same thing. This whole thing is a giant illusion. The wealthiest 10% own 93% of all stocks. The poorest 50% of Americans own just 1% of all stocks. 50% of the US population owns 2.6% of all the wealth. Get this, 42 million Americans are on food stamps and much of that money is spent on junk food. And uh, when you look at the uh, obesity in this country, when you look at the um, uh, physical condition, the health of this nation, you can see why. We have, pro this is probably the unhealthiest generation in American history. Coca Cola, Sprite, and other soft drinks are the most commonly bought items via the $135 billion a year supplemental nutrition assistance program, also known as SNAP.
Candy, potato chips, frozen pizza, ice cream, cookies, and other ultra-processed food dominates the top 20 items. Again, this is why we have an obesity epidemic in this country, why we have a health crisis in this country where people are, are getting sick all the time uh, because they're eating the most horrible food, processed food, filled with garbage and fillers. And you're not going to live very long if all you're eating is candy, ice cream, and potato chips. 40% of the U.S. population is either living in poverty or is considered to be among the ranks of the working poor. We're told still to this day how strong the economy is and how strong the U.S. consumer is. Yet 40% of the U.S. population is either living in poverty or is considered to be among the working poor. Figure that out. Of course, half this country doesn't even have $400 saved up, but we have a strong economy with a strong consumer. If your income is not increased by $12,000 since January of 2020, excuse me, 2021, you are falling behind. Now that economic conditions are starting to deteriorate at a frightening pace, Americans are becoming very concerned. I don't know about you, I was becoming very, very concerned years ago. Uh, because I was seeing what was happening with the retail apocalypse, the vacancies, the homeless uh, crisis that we were seeing here in California uh, exploding. Uh, people uh, were not able to save money. Wages were not, really not keeping up uh, with inflation a couple years ago. And, and, and then, of course, when they uh, pumped trillions of dollars into the economy, how in the world any, with anybody – uh, with a fifth grade education, couldn't see uh, what this was going to cause, the repercussions of this with inflation. Uh, it, it's beyond me. Spending habits are now being altered. McDonald's, Home Depot, Under Armour, Starbucks, all reporting disappointing earnings as people got back, as people uh, cut, cut back on fast food, kitchen renovations, sneakers, and afternoon lattes. Yes, the $10 lattes are over. A lot of people are going to be left behind when what's left of this economy crashes. It's, it's crashing right now before your very eyes. And so many people right now are, are just surviving. And it's amazing to me. I, I, I gave the data the other day that 45% of the, of the country said that they're going to take a summer vacation, on average spend $3,558, and then you look at the data that half the country doesn't even have $400 saved up, yet half the country is going to spend uh, over $3,500 on a summer vacation. Where's the money coming from? You know exactly where it's coming from. It's going to come from credit cards. People are going to add more debt on top of the debt they already have at 23 plus percent. People are just going to ride this ship to the bottom of the ocean, ladies and gentlemen. Oxfam's new report, since 2020, 5 billion people have become poor worldwide, while the world's richest men have more than doubled their fortunes at a rate of $14 million per hour. Hundreds of millions of people are struggling to keep up with the cost of living. Uh, meanwhile, billionaires uh, are $3.3 trillion richer than they were in 2020. Uh, I don't know about you, this is completely unsustainable. And people are going to begin to get angry when they get hungry, uh, when they cannot find a job. They're working two or three right now, and they cannot keep their heads above water. What happens when they begin to lose jobs, and they're only working one part-time job or two part-time jobs, but they need three, and all of a sudden now they're struggling to feed their families, which they're doing right now, but, but uh, they have credit cards uh, to keep the lifeline going. Uh, this is unsustainable, and this is really, really uh, scary because things could get really chaotic if we continue going down this road. And from what I see, we're going to continue going down this road. I don't see uh, what is going to stop this, uh, what is going to prevent this, because it seems daily uh, – Things are, are accelerating and getting worse. A very concerning article I was reading earlier today, uh, this coming from CNBC, the president to release 1 million barrels of gasoline to reduce prices at the pump ahead of July 4th. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this could be very disastrous. This could have long-term consequences to this nation. This is th What this is going to do is 
uh, lower gas prices about two or three cents for about one to two days. Uh, this leaves the entire continental northeast defenseless to any environmental catastrophe or shock. So we've drained uh, our strategic petroleum reserves uh, at around 50%. Now uh, this reserve, I believe, up in the uh, northeast, uh, we're going to drain a million barrels out of there. And this, again, this stuff was not meant to manipulate prices. This oil is for emergencies, catastrophes, uh, a shock to our nation. And we're doing this to lower gas prices a couple cents for a couple days. Does this make any sense to anybody out there? Comment down below. MSN.com. Hostels are popping up in LA neighborhoods. What is a hostel? Well, it's a form of low-cost short-term rental. Uh, it's not an Airbnb. Uh, this is where you pay like $25 a night uh, for a bed, and maybe there's multiple people sleeping in a room. Uh, residents in LA say that they've seen strangers smoking weed, drinking alcohol, lots of police presence in front of new buildings. Could you imagine living in a neighborhood in Los Angeles and somebody's house, uh, maybe a triplex, maybe an apartment complex, whatever it may be, is now turning into a hostel and people are in there doing drugs, uh, all kind of nefarious activities taking place while your kids might be out in the front yard or riding their bikes or whatever. This is what's happening uh, in your neighborhood. And, and where, is, where is the law? What is going on here? Uh, this does not seem like the America I grew up in. So you've got uh, some very, very uh, disturbed people now uh, sleeping in your neighborhood, doing nefarious things, uh, criminal records, committing crimes, and they're next door to you. They're across the street from you and your family. Uh, this is, um, again how this is even being tolerated, I have no idea. A cast of characters have brought noise and crime into the neighborhoods, $25 per night for a bed. What's next, ladies and gentlemen? What do you think that when you're charging $25 a night for a bed in somebody's house, uh, a, a condo complex, an apartment, duplex, triplex, what do you think you're going to attract? And just think about the working people in these neighborhoods that have got to tolerate this stuff. This is unbelievable. Pixar is laying off 14% of its workforce as Disney scales back content. This on CNBC today. And I, I was reading this article and I'm thinking Disney is building a project five minutes from where I'm making this video. And the homes are starting out at around $2 million, I think roughly about $1,000 a square foot. And I just wonder how in the world uh, this is, this is going to end. Um, we have so many uh, people, builders, developing right now and building homes out here, it's, it's shocking. And I saw this happening uh, back in 2007, right before uh, the plug was pulled, and boy, was it ugly. And I think we're gonna see a repeat of that, no doubt, but uh, I just wonder who in the world's gonna come out and buy a home from Disney for $2 million at $1,000 a square foot. It, it, it's, it's just, I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of homes now sitting under construction here. I, we see a lot of condominium projects being put up right now. And I'm just thinking, where, how are people going to do this at 7 plus percent for a mortgage, uh, people losing jobs, uh, people not making enough money to even qualify? Uh, how is this going to continue? But let me ask you this. There is big money out there. There's no doubt about it. There are people that can afford $1,000 a square foot, $2 million, $3 million for a home all day. But are they going to do that? at Disneyland, at a Disneyland project. Is that where they want to be for $1,000 a foot? I'd rather be a Bighorn up the street for $1,000 a foot, but that's just me. Uh, I'm gonna finish with this last one from The Hedge. Global bankers are suddenly worried about the soaring US debt. Where have they been? In January, Jamie Dimon, JP Morgan said in an interview with Fortune Magazine, the record US debt is a cliff and we are going 60 miles per hour towards it. Uh, we are adding right now 1 
trillion dollars to the debt every hundred days in this country. And there's people out there that say that you better not own gold or silver. You're, you're, you shouldn't own gold and silver. Um, gold and silver is bad. It, it's a barbarous relic. Uh, it's, it's worthless. It's this, that. Um, this is why I own gold and silver, because when you're adding a, a trillion dollars every hundred days, what else do you think you should own? I mean, these are the two most undervalued assets on planet earth. Um, buy whatever you want, but I mean, you better be preparing for what is coming. Jamie Dimon is warning you right now, whether you love him, hate him, whatever. You don't even have to listen to what Jamie Dimon is saying. Uh, uh, every hundred days, a trillion dollars is added to the debt. What do you think is going to happen to inflation? And what do you think is going to happen to the U.S. dollar? Think about that for one minute. Why are all these banks, why is China, Russia, Saudi Arabia, India, etc. Why is everybody adding to the gold reserves? The Fed must either, he says, raise rates to stop inflation but cause debt to skyrocket, or the Fed must lower rates and return to quantitative easing to elevate debts but trigger an inflation crisis. Either way it goes, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be bad. The Fed has no way out. It's going to be very, very bad. So as I, I leave you today, please, um, think about what's going on. Think about your preparations. What can you be doing uh, to be adding to those preparations? What can you be doing as a person to become stronger uh, and better? Uh, add to your skill sets. Know how to protect yourself. Uh, know how to do things. Uh, and, and of course, get into the mental mindset that things are going to get tough. And if you're not doing that now, it's going to be too late to start when this all happens. And you're seeing, you know, the death by a thousand cuts right now because every day it's more layoffs, uh, it's more inflation, it's uh, more middle class being decimated, it's the standard of living going down, it's this uh, uh, separation uh, of, of wealthy people and poor people and opportunity, this wealth gap, and it's going to continue to widen. And you know, we're living in a country where taxes are going to go up, where um, inflation is going to continue to go up, where it's going to cost more to survive. And so you better get ready because it's going to get very rough out there. Uh, it's really, really sad to have to make these videos daily. And it, it almost brings really a tear to your eye to see how far we have fallen and that uh, this is where we're at today. Um, I'm going to leave it there today. Uh, if anything, I hope somebody out there is, is thinking about what is happening. Um, if this video makes you think, that's all that I wanted to do. Think for yourself. Be as self-sufficient and independent as you can. Because if you're not, if you're, re if you're relying on the system to save you, you're going to be in very, very big trouble. You know, honestly, it, it almost seems to me like they are purposely going to crash everything. And I think that people think that the, I think they think the opposite, that they're going to try to save everything and save you and save the taxpayer and this and that. But think about what if the plan was to crash everything? Are you prepared for that? Are you prepared for a massive U.S. global crash? Are you prepared mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially? If you're not, you better figure it out real quick. God bless.